in. But anyway, um, I met Harley then, and uh, she's just... <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Tell me it didn't break, right? No, but that was probably horrible. Oh, something went... <laughs> no, that's fine. There's been a safety pin rattling around in there for years and years. <laughs> So, for those of you that missed my a little bit of an intro, she's uh, just 17. All right, I'm just not going to do that that way. I'll and just... plays nine different instruments, and mostly self-taught, and she writes music. She was uh, Tom Tom's uh, songwriter winner two years ago at 15. And, uh, 14. Four, oh, excuse me, 14. And, um, and she does poetry, she does it all. So... Bless you, child. All right. Bless you, Grandma. Yeah. All right, then. In the house. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to do Grandma's in the house just for you. So, uh, so basically, Patsy told me about this <laughs> over a month ago. Yeah, a couple months. A couple months ago. And uh, I, I hastily decided what I was doing at 4 o'clock in the morning. Today. Yeah, and I made sticky notes. Oh, you're 17. Okay, so anyway, you. you know what? <laughs> Whatever. Pat. Oh, did I say that? Okay. <laughs> what if I use your age against you? How would that make you feel? <laughs> okay. All right. Put me in my place. Okay. All right. Okay. Enough so, said. Um, basically, everything that you're about to hear is uh, the inner workings of my brain and mad ramblings that my. Uh, well, my therapist was like, you should write a journal. And I was like, I don't want to do that dear diary stuff. Yes. There you go. Um, so anyway, I decided to write a journal. And I, all of my journal entries start with Dear Gemini, which is my sign. But whatever, you know, I'm just going to start reading. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, it's all really depressing. But here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I said before, when I segue into songs, fun stuff. Okay, actually starting. I can film you, right? Yeah. Okay. Dear God, excuse my vagrant ways. I spend my life dodging my own figurative bullets. Very silently, I slip out of the way at the last possible moment, and I find myself peering into the filing system of my tortured mind. If life is unfair, then why is it only unfair when it's convenient? So now I sit battered by my affair with the short end of the stick, and life's sadistic manner is consistently more and more difficult to recover from. Another new battle with the cycle of abuse that I presently experience in a different form than that of my past. Dear Gemini, when you consistently experience agony, what is pain but another wound? Wounds are complicated. When terror fills them, one has the urge to become complacent. But though we can't overcome our terror, despite adaptation, we find it necessary to strengthen the very foundation of our aspired circumstance. It isn't clearly visualized. It isn't miraculously discovered. It's a merely hopeful sense of accomplishment. And it's a hole between dreaming and success that you'll never be able to climb out of. Dear Gemini, Thursday's child has far to go. I sit within a vacant future, peering at the aspects of my self-motivation, innovating the factors of its efficiency, weaving a web of fibs to lead me to the path towards success. My individuality challenges me, stays within the very back of my mind, mocking me. And it's so very persistent, unlike me. So now I'll just maintain my grasp onto music, and I'll attempt to ignore the rest. Dear Gemini, Resist the urge not to persist. There's no escape from self-destruction. There's only escape that causes it. I'm deprived of my worth each time I partake, and I can only find comfort in knowing that the negative health effects aren't immediate. I can only find solace in knowing that I'll either eventually give up or destroy myself completely. And everyone says to focus on the good in life, but how do you focus on the good when it barely ever presents itself? How do you focus on the light at the end of the tunnel when it's just a freight train heading your way? Dear Gemini, what enables us to exist in this pointless manner? 
Is it God or is it the universe? This page bothers me now. There's one mushed up smell spelling of baggage that makes me want to rip it out. And that makes me want to white it out and fix it later, and I probably will. When writing in pen, mistakes are permanent in a way that's mm -hmm. a lot like life. Mm -hmm. All of your mistakes are permanent, and they feast on your guts and your soul until you eventually keel over on pills when you're in school. Dear Gemini, I can feel the dizzy discombobulation. I can feel the drowsiness, the growing exhaustion. I can feel the loopiness attacking my vision, my actions, my white page destruction, my penmanship. My mistakes are all permanent. I'm trying. Dear Gemini, looking at life through a filter. Here is it, product of this self-destructive capitalistic society, complaining about the productivity of my own self-destructive ways. Dear God, if one even exists, I repeat, it is not just me, it's society. It's not just me, it's the entire human race. We were founded on the same ideas that create our self-destruction. We are matter, we are the spiral. We are the cycle of build and destroy, create and self-destruct. I find comprehension in the repetitive self-assurance I lie to myself with. Or is it a lie at all? It's not me, it's science, it's not her, it's science, it's not us, it's the universe. I swear I'm not crazy, it's the universe. I'm not self-medicating, I'm not destroying myself, it's the universe. Dear Gemini, what is the point of all this rambling when the very curse of your enlightenment that causes you to write is all that you can bear to write about? Segue into song. Yay!